There's a lot of areas you have to take into account when trying to sell on Amazon's platform. You have to take into account your title, your copy, your design work, your pricing, the actual products that you sell. But the hardest one that I see so many people struggling with is advertising. It's such a complicated thing when it really doesn't have to be. There's a lot of very easy ways to advertise. And so we're gonna be going through a step-by-step -step on how you can set up your own ads on Amazon in just a few minutes with a very, very good understanding of exactly how that ad is going to do. So starting off, we're gonna get this product right here. So we're gonna be doing this bar soap today. We're gonna grab this ASIN, because this is the ASIN we're gonna be utilizing for our advertising. We're gonna come on over to our campaign builder. You can get to this by going to your campaign manager and then just clicking create on ad. Now, when you first come here, there are three different types of campaigns, technically four, but we're not gonna count sponsored TV, at least for now. We have sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display. Now, for this purpose, we're going to be focused entirely on sponsored products, as that we are going to be trying to advertise a specific product. So we're gonna click continue on sponsored products, and we're gonna be met first and foremost most with our ad groups and ad group name. Now, this is one of the most important parts of advertising, in my opinion, and it is proper naming convention. You want to be able to make your ad group and your actual campaign name things where you can see it very quickly and understand exactly what it is that that campaign and that ad group is meant for. So for today's purpose, for instance, we will put the ASIN, we'll do a dash, then we'll do exact, and then we're going to do up and down. Now what this is telling me is we're going to be advertising this ASIN in an exact format with up and down bidding. Now, so let's search next in the product section here, as you can see, we'll search for our ASIN. We'll add it in here. And then we're gonna come on down here to targeting. Now targeting has two different kinds, automatic and manual targeting. Automatic is where Amazon will choose keywords based on how similar they think it is to your product how likely it is to convert. It's not a bad type of targeting when it comes to someone who doesn't understand keyword research and how to actually make a campaign successful. So just letting Amazon do it isn't necessarily the worst idea in the world. There are tons of automatic campaigns that I love utilizing. You definitely should utilize them. But for today's purpose, we're gonna be doing manual targeting. This is where we get to choose either the keyword or the product uh, that we're actually going to be going against. So we'll do manual targeting, then we'll scroll down and when we do that, we're met with this, where we can do keyword targeting or product targeting. It's exactly as it sounds. Either you choose the keywords that you're advertising against or the products that you're advertising against. Today, we're gonna to be doing keyword targeting. Now we'll scroll on down here to our actual keyword targeting section. So here we have a few different things. We have first and foremost, our bid, which right now it says suggested bid for Prime Day. We're just gonna do suggested bid. This is based on bat the past bidding strategies uh, of that actual keyword. So what that means is essentially Amazon has all of the data from everyone who has ever advertised on specific keywords. And so they can suggest a bid based on all of that data. Now you can filter by broad phrase and exact. And as I said, we're going to be doing an exact campaign, but some of you might not understand what match types actually are. So a little bit of information here when it comes to broad match type. Broad match type is when you can have a phrase such as skincare and these two words in this keyword phrase can end up anywhere in the actual search. So if we come on over to Amazon here, for instance, if I were to type in skin health care, this would target, skincare would target in a broad fashion for this because we have skin in one part and care in another. So that shows that it is a broad. So it does not matter what this middle word is. You could even have health and happy care. So you can have essentially any and all words in between as long as you have both skin and care in the actual search. Now for phrase, it's a little different. Phrase, it has to be skin care for men. This is the difference where skincare can't just have the two words appear anywhere in the search. It has to have the actual keyword, which is skincare in this uh, circumstance, actually show up next to each other. So we can't have anything in between these two words. 
Now, finally, we have exact. And exact is exact as it sounds. Exact would be skincare. So for skincare, this is the only thing it ha will show up for exact campaign. So if we do skincare for men, we would no longer be targeting this from the aspect of we're doing an exact campaign. So when we're going through and we are doing uh, an exact campaign, there's a few things you want to be looking at. Uh, how do we actually determine which of these keywords are good keywords to utilize? Well, that's where we're going to use a fun little tool called Magnet. So Magnet is a Helium 10 tool. Uh, what you want to be doing here is going over to your tools, then Magnet for keyword research. What this is going to help us understand is what we should actually be targeting for our product. So if I were to look, since we do have a bar soap, I'm going to assume bar soap is one of our primary keywords. So we're going to take that and we are going to come over here and go to bar soap and we're going to do get keywords. What this is going to do is this is going to give us a list and a lot of data. Uh, it's going to make us understand exactly what the overall uh, of bar soap is for this category of keywords. So we can understand search volume. We can understand what other types of keywords we might want to be targeting here and everything else in between. So once we're done fetching this data here, it'll uh, show up in just a second and then we'll be able to go through and look at the actual search volume. There we go. All right, so you can see here we have our keyword bar soap and it has a search volume of 61,081 per month. So it's always going to be on monthly unless you change it. But what that means is that 61,081 people are searching for bar soap every single month. Now, bar soap is obviously a very, very broad, and I don't mean the match type, but very broad keyword in the sense that it has a lot of search volume and it can apply to a lot of different scenarios. We want to, especially when we're looking at our product, try and understand what are the selling features and the value of our product. So if we're looking down here, we can see a few different uh, specific keyword phrases uh, that we're going to look at. We're going to see a lot of different ones where Irish Spring, so this is an actual brand. So we're seeing branded keywords as a primary here. And then we're also seeing more branded, Nourish, London. And so one of the biggest things when you're looking for keywords that you have to understand is just because something may have some form of search volume does not necessarily mean it's what we actually want to be looking for. So when we're going through, we have to understand what is it that we're actually going to be finding from uh, a good search volume or a search word. So you can see here we have face wash. We have body wash. That's another one. We have Dove Body Wash. So this would be a campaign that we could create for specifically targeting Dove as a competitor. Uh, we also have specifically Body Wash Women. This is something we would want to not look at doing simply because it's not for women. Again, our product is for men. So this is how essentially when you're looking through trying to understand where should you actually put your money. You don't necessarily want to do these super high search terms just because they are, you know, Dove Body Wash who has, uh, you know, 200,000 people searching for it every single month because that's not going to actually help you in your overall sales velocity, right? And it's going to likely be extremely expensive for you to actually target against that uh, and try and, you know, sell when somebody's searching for that specific thing. So uh, once we are looking through and finding a few that we actually like, uh, the biggest thing here that we can actually start looking at is what are the suggestions versus what makes sense to actually do. So some of these that we're actually going to do, we will do uh, this bar soap, even though it is uh, fairly broad and it's going to be a little expensive to do. Now, for the bid, Amazon does, again, give you a suggested bid. I am not going to say that you should always use Amazon suggested bid. I will say that uh, this is something where I would typically start much lower than the bid. Uh, the reason for this is that you can always increase the bid at the end of the day, and based on the type of bidding strategy that you do, you may end up paying much more than whatever it is this is set at. So we'll set this at, let's say, $1.25 to start. All right, and then coming down to negative keyword targeting. For exact campaigns, 
this is not something that you have to worry about. But when it comes to phrase campaign campaigns and broad campaigns, this is definitely something you have to worry about. And what negative targeting is, is it makes it so that you can set specifically certain phrases, keywords, exact, exactly what you want to say of, hey, I do not want this keyword to appear in my campaign. So if I were to be doing, for instance, a broad campaign, which again, we could do uh, skin, uh, let's do watermelon skin soap care. So this would be considered a broad campaign. However, if for instance, I wanted to say with Dove, as you can see, there's gonna be a lot of stuff for Dove. So I would want to, for instance, do Dove. Uh, and you can put Dove in to the actual negative keyword targeting, and it will actually make it so you will not target against any Dove skincare stuff. So that's one of the major reasons when you're doing broad and phrase to use negative keyword targeting, because otherwise, again, as we were just talking about, you're going to end up spending way too much money, as we saw with Dove having a 200,000 search volume. That 200,000 is going to end up eating away at your budget, and you're likely not going to be targeting in the correct way that you should. Now, coming back here, uh, for this exact scenario with an exact campaign, we're not going to worry about negative keyword targeting because again, we are an exact campaign. It is bar soap exactly. We do not have to worry about anything else popping in there. We don't have to worry about it being Dove bar soap because even Dove, Dove bar soap will not work. Uh, it can be anything besides uh, that. It literally has to be bar soap that we're looking for, and that's it. Now, coming on down, again, campaign bidding strategy. Now, this is where some people are likely to get tricked up when it comes to PPC. And what each of these does is a little complicated unless you really understand it. So, if we were to look at dynamic bids up and down. So, dynamic bids up and down means that it can both raise and lower your bids overall by a maximum of 100%. So again, we set our bid to $1.25. So if we set our bid to $1.25 with up and down, what that means is that it will raise it up to $2.50 or down to nothing. So we have to look at 100% uh, swing up and down from where our bid is to actually understand what it is that you're going to get. The point of up and down is so that you can have a little bit lower placement of bid. It allows you to swing up and you can actually see where your cost of click is supposed to be if it has to be higher. Uh, up and down is where I would suggest most people start at. Now, secondarily to that, we have dynamic bids down only. Down only is where they'll lower the bids in real time uh, if you know the ad is uh, less likely to actually make the sale. So what that means is exactly as it sounds. If we're at dollar twenty-five, they might lower that bid a little bit more than you know if we're not likely to actually sell on that specific thing. This works really well for exact campaigns that have extremely high search volume. So again, if we are going to create a competitor campaign against Dove Bar Soap, <laughs> we could do so, and I would do a down only with that. Now, fixed bids is exactly as it sounds. Fixed bids is the easiest for newer sellers to understand because it's exactly that. It is a fixed bid. It does not raise. It does not go up. It does not go down. You will pay exactly $1.25 and nothing else. The issue with fixed bids is that you likely won't get a lot of data from them. So they won't actually help you understand what you're spending money on or you know what is a good margin to put your bid at. Now, secondarily to the campaign bidding strategy, we have placement. Now, placement is on the campaign level rather than the keyword level. And what placement does is it has three different types, top of search, so first page. So that means that if I were to do bar soap right now, you can see this is considered a top of search placement. Each of these uh, sponsored products are top of search. They are at the very top on the first page. We have that Dove bar soap. 
We have a Naturals one, another Naturals one, and a Dr. Squatch one. So each of these, you can see the sponsored here, is a top of search product placement for bar soap. Secondarily, we have rest of search. So rest of search is exactly as it sounds. So rest of search is you're scrolling through, you're scrolling through, and eventually one of these would end up being on second page somewhere. Uh, you'll see a sponsored. So here we go, rest of search right here. So this is not a top of search, this is a rest of search. So these placements are in the middle of the actual search page. And then finally, we have product pages. Now product pages is, again, exactly as it sounds. If you're looking on a product page, you'll typically see some form of advertisement, usually right here or down below the product. This one just happens to have this one down here. Uh, sometimes they appear around here, but mostly the product page, and you can see here's another sponsor of these ones, but most of the time they're gonna be right here. Now, uh, for this one, we're not going to be messing around with any of the placements whatsoever. We're just gonna do 0% across the board. And you can even see an example where in real time, it'll give you an understanding of exactly what your bid would be. Uh, now, campaign name. Again, naming convention is very, very important when you are looking at the very specific types that you need to do. So if we're going to look at this again, we will come back over. We're going to grab our ASIN again. We're going to come over here. We're going to do the ASIN. We're going to do the exact going to do bar soap up and down. Now what this is going to tell us is what the ASIN is, what's the campaign type, how are we actually targeting, so or what are we targeting, the bar soap, right? So this is what we're targeting. And if you have a lot of different keywords in there, which I would suggest you do, again, if you use Magnet to grab some more keywords, such as you know, just soap in general, men's body wash would be another one I would add in there. Bar soap, as we saw, has a good search volume, and so we're using that one. Uh, I would suggest having a generalized version of this rather than all of the different keywords. And then finally, the targeting we're doing. Now, if I were to have something with the placement, I would also do something along the lines of TOS for top of search, 100%. There we go. Uh, we'll take out the percent, but either way, uh, you can now see exactly what this campaign is for. So finally, we have portfolio. Now, portfolio is exactly just an easy way to show exactly where each type of product is. You can typically create portfolios in a way that you want. You can do them usually by product. You can do them by ad type, etc. I like doing them by product personally. It makes it a little bit easier. We won't add anything to the portfolio today though. Then you can see we have our start and end date. So for start date, we can add any date we want. If we don't want to do this one just right now, right away, we can do it in the future. So we'll do that. And if you do want to add an end date, you can. I don't usually suggest it as you can just end a campaign whenever you want to. Unless you have specific campaigns set up for things like Prime Day, Black Friday, just Q4 in general. Those are the only times I would look at adding any form of end date. And then finally, your budget. Now, Amazon will always give you a suggested daily budget of some kind, and they'll give you, you know, typical reasoning behind that budget. My advice is always to say, put your daily budget at what makes you comfortable. You can always raise your daily budget. You can always lower your daily budget. The big thing is you don't want to get into this and then find out you've spent a million dollars and not have single sale. So I would always start lower than what you are thinking you need to. For something like this, I would simply start at 15 bucks. 15 bucks a day, and then from there, we can always tweak it up, we can tweak it down if we're not getting exactly what we want. Finally, all you would have to do is launch your campaign, and there you go. It's gonna give you all of the information about your campaign here, exactly what it is, what your products are, it's gonna tell you everything you need to know and then you can even go through, you can review the campaign in real time and you're gonna be able to see everything that's going on with those keywords. When you go to actually review the campaign, it will give everything uh, again here for what you actually did and what the actual campaign is doing. So this will give you a very kind of easy breakdown of everything around the campaign uh, and what you're actually going to be doing with it. So 
Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you understood and this gave a little bit of a breakdown. Again, my suggestion here for anything that you are going to be doing uh, would be definitely learn to understand a little bit more on the keyword research side. The magnet is going to help you amazingly when it comes to Amazon advertising. Always start and break things out by each type of campaign if you can. So do an exact type, then do a phrase type, and then do a broad type. And then finally as well, make sure you're naming everything correctly so you can very easily go through all of your campaigns and see where you're going.